Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux, in which we're playing as the Mongolian Khanate, the history of Mongolia. Mongolia was under the control of the Manchu Qing Dynasty for centuries, until the 1911 Xinhai Revolution led to Mongolian independence under the 8th Jebsum Damba Kutuk to uh, the head of Mongolian Buddhism, who took the title of Bog Khan. China still claimed Mongolia as Chinese territory. Mongolia's independence was shattered in 1919 when Zhu Xu Zhang, a Chinese warlord of the Anhui clique, did occupy the country. However, in 1920, Roman von Ungern Sternberg, a white Russian military leader leading his Asiatic cavalry division, took Uger from the Chinese and restored the Bogd Khan. Ungern enforced the Khan's rule with an iron fist, crushing revolts and dissidents while making deals with aristocratic Mongol princes. The Mongol Adenam, a socialist party inspired by the Bolsheviks, was formed and began a revolution in 21 to overthrow Ungern's regime. Due to lack of foreign support, this revolution failed, and the Man were forced to go into hiding. Following the near death and temporary coma of the Bog Khan in 1924 due to his poor health and a possible failed poisoning attempt by Adenam agents, the Man rebelled again, claiming Ungern had no longer held any legitimacy in the country without his liege. Or his liege. This revolution was harshly repressed, and multiple senior members of the Man, including their leader Dadim Sukhbaratar, were executed, forcing the shattered Man remnants into hiding once more. And this time, Ungan made deals with the Russian government for economic and military support, and his forces were also able to seize Zilingol from the Chinese Guomenjin. Ungern's rule was still shaky, however, and following a series of peasant uprisings in 1930, led primarily by Buddhist lamas and uh, uh, and nomadic patriot Gada Marin, Ungan purged many of the high-ranking lamas in his government, destroying much of the support he had accrued over the years. With the Bog Khan's ever-failing health and Ungan's ever-rising ambitions, the future of Mongolia is uncertain, especially as old foes and new enemies begin to stir once more. What about now? The Mad Baron's Domain, and I apologize uh, that I'm reading all this, but if you'd like to skip ahead one or two minutes in the video, please go right ahead. In 1936, Ungern's rule means under threat. There are four main cliques that dominate Mongolian political society. The Roiskiasa, uh, Roiskaya, Voyanaya, a clique, are a clique of white Russian officers under the leadership of Ungern Stanbeck. They focus on cooperation with Russia, military strength, and anti-socialism. They can only lead the country, working with the Yazgortan Survaljitan and the Budin Zulvul. The Yazgortan Survaljitan is the name of the hierarchy of the Mongolian princes and nobles, who have been the ruling class of the country for centuries. Focusing on keeping their wealth and power secure, they are largely led by the Inner Mongolian Prince D, who leads a domineering and ambitious group of Inner Mongolian princes centered around the region of Zilingol. The Budin Zovol, uh, Zovlo, are accounts of high-ranking Buddhist lamas, tukus, and monks in Mongolia, which are for formed following Ungern's purge of lamas in 1930. Many members of the council are fanatic Buddhists who wish to turn Mongolia into a truly theocratic society under the Bog Khan. They are led by the 7th Chankya Kutuk II, a high-ranking lama from Inner Mongolia, the Mongol Adenam. The Socialist Party rebelled in 1921 and 24, remaining hiding, but a strong force still to be reckoned with, led by Solon Danzan and receiving aid from other various Mongolian democratic parties and even the famed Gada Marin, have taken some inspiration from Russia and Chinese democratic regimes and therefore has begun advocating for a multi-party democracy under their control. Aside from these main political cliques, the bandit lord and war warrior Tulkul Jalama rules from his bandit fortress in Kovd, seeking to restore ancient glories and vengeance against the Chinese. Foreigners besiege our Khanate as well, for the Soyombo revival society has once again begun to rise to national prominence, advocating for the transformation of Mongolia into a Russian colonial satellite. Their main opposition comes in the form of the Anfu Club, remnants of the disgraced Anhui clique that fled to Mongolia following the disastrous northern expedition, and now seek to use Mongolia as the launching point of the Crusade of Beijing. As if our inner politics could not get any more hectic, Mongolia also faces many external threats. For many years, border skirmishes have taken place between the Muslim Chinese Maklik and Mongolian troops across the border. A similar situation is taking place in the Dzongaria region of the Xinjiang clique. The main point of tension is the province of Yushu, which has swapped hands between Tibet and the Maklik over the past few years. The province is a power kit waiting to explode, and when it does, the opportunity to unite the Mongolian people cannot be ignored. Mongolia sits on the edge of an uncertain future, and it's up to the Mad Baron to steer the steady, unsteady ship in the right direction. Lest the whole rotten structure collapse and the various internal forces that sail the regime tear our country apart. Glory Mongolia, second command for a Ungarn Khan. Today's newspapers around the world have been filled with the news of the assassination of the Russian president, Alexander Kerensky. Due to the assassination, Russia has fallen into domestic chaos and thus will not be inter interested or capable of intervening in domestic Mongolian politics. Roman von Ungarn Sternberg understands that this is the right time to make Mongolia uh, great, as great as it once was, but he needs a skilled second in command to succeed. Who will choose his loyal general from the Asiatic Cavalry Division, Boris Rezukin, or maybe the current head of government, the Mongolian aristocrat Tugs Orichin Nasanurum, a Namnan Surin, to further consolidate his popularity with the Mongol people. Finally, the religious leader, the 7th Changkya Kutuku, could be chosen to guarantee Ungern's divine status and prove his direct reincarnation as a god of war. 
Um, various new paths in uh, New Mongolia. Let's see, right hand man. This dude, or this dude, huh. Let's see, in the final event of the short chain, you will be given three choices. Having to survive and lead to attempt to claim Russia and bring back the Tsardom. Un Tsardom? Get, get shot, but escape before forces when he wastes his con LARP time like before. Be killed outright, we'll have saved Mongolia. Um, holy crap, there's so many paths. All non ungarn paths can still at least form a greater Mongolian state. And paths like Jalama, Abudin, Zul, Zavlul will have special formables. Um, cool. So, Tsardom, having Ungan get shot but escape forces him to fall into a coma. He's got to get shot, so. Um, really? I want to I be really cavalry focused if we can, possibly. So, I want to go with this guy, Boris. The Russians aren't watching. An awful event has occurred. President Kerensky, who was able to keep the Russian Republic from open rebellion for decades, has been killed. During his presidency, we were able to broker many economic and military deals, allowing an extremely weak economy to grow. Although Kerensky did not allow the House of Romanov to rightfully retake the throne, he was still better than the Reds, and he allowed a relationship to grow strong. <coughs> However, everything has been brought into question. Any sign of stability that Kerensky brought to the Russian Baltics was lost the moment the bullet struck his body. With many trying to fill the power vacuum, Kerensky has left. It seems that we have been forgotten. There are worrying signs that we might lose the Russian support that our nation has become dependent on. Their assistance is vital, and the Russians aren't watching. The Russian nation is still recovering from the recent civil war, concerned about continuing German dominance in the Caucasus and the breakaway state of Transamur in the Far East. This is a perfect time to assemble the War Council and decide where Mongolia goes next. Economic and military assistance from Russia has been temporarily halted. Crap! What will we have feared has come true. We have just received word from the current Russian administration that they have decided to temporarily end their military and economic aid to our nation. Without it, we will only suffer. Oh, that sucks. Um, because the economic aid we get is minus 5% consumer goods factories and more construction speed. So, yeah, that's, that sucks, so. But what are we going to do? I don't know, like, I've never, I haven't tried this off screen. And if things don't go very well for us, well, we've got ways of making things work for us. I'll put it like that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I don't want to kill the monthly people. Uh, Roman? Mm, go offensive, yeah. And we'll go with cavalry expert as well. Brother market crash. Well, good. Good job, guys. Who cares about Afghanistan? We're still okay with whatever we have. Just, we have research. Slower construction speed, I should say. Um, Anarchist left in France. The god of war. I like that one. War economy would be very good. The funeral of Ongdor Gongar. Pervilen Gongar. For normal... Locally known as Ondora Tal Gongor, was an awe-inspiring sight to behold, standing over 7 foot 9 inches, or 2.36 meters, tall. Gongor was by far the largest Mongolian seen in centuries, born around 1885 as the third child of a nomadic herder. The rumors of his size caught the attention of the Bogd Khan, and was invited to the princely court and made into an honorary noble at the Bogd Khan's court. Ondor Gongor was always one of the most standout faces in the Khan's court. In his prime, he served as a keeper to the Khan's elephants, his bodyguard, a semi-professional wrestler, and even as a diplomat and toll office worker, all in service of his liege. Marrying a noble seamstress after following a prophecy of fate as dictated by the Khan, the dude lived happily in service of the Mongolian state until his recent tragic death. Long suffering from giga gigantism and a slew of health effects and deformities the condition can cause, Gongor passed away in sleep just a few days ago. The state has put a lavish funeral on for the beloved Mongolian giant, and the nation mourns through the tragic loss of a truly gentle soul. Heroes come in all shapes and sizes. Over here is really good for industry, but we'll see. We will see eventually. Develop Chinese industry would be good. Um, a charge against Madim. The sun rose high across the eastern steppe as yet another unruly and chaos filled day began anew to test the bloody baron and his struggling regime. If it wasn't put down, the week's tenth marauding band of horde, it was once again doing battle with the infamous Gada Meren and his radical separatists. No day offered rest or respite for the mad baron and has begun to take its toll. Ongon Steberg has never been a fully stable man. <clears throat> And the constant state of his war, his, of war, his mind swirls in couple with the rigors of running a state as backwards as Mongolia have truly begun to wear away at the aging warlord's remaining sanity and health. However, nothing like a good fight returns a vigor and desire for conquest and power to the bloody baron's veins, and fate would just have it that another fight was brewing on the horizon. To the east, the famed Gada Marin, a rebel leader and Mongolian nationalist revolutionary, and his forces have been seen amassing once more, poised to strike into the heartlands of Mongolia yet again and wreak havoc on the baron's domain. Never shying from a fight, the baron Ungan Sternberg has rallied his forces of Russian exiles and hired mercenaries and tribals to ride to meet this Luada and his hobbled together militias on the field of battle. 
After marching towards each other for a full day and night, the two forces met and began the clash in the grasslands outside the village of Mandurku, with the riders of the Mad Baron and the god of Madrin viciously greeting each other with bow and saber. In a thunderous crash of steel on steel and beast on beast, with the writhing masses of these rally cavalry hordes slammed into one another with the force of a freight terrain, causing sparks to dance off swords and armor as red mist filled the air, turning the sky as red as a blood so bloody soul beneath them. After hours of struggle and horrific slaughter, the dust began to settle as a calm quiet swept across the once raging battlefield. Though a pit Eric, victory conflict for both sides, a clear but bloody bruise. Victor is outstanding, but who? The Mad Baron was savagely cut down in battle, and God of Moranus claimed his head is thrown. Ooh. His forces routed, God of Moranus escaped the maelstorm barely and fled into the Black Gobi. Genghis Khan II would not be available. Un Unberg Sternberg. Ungern Sternberg was struck by a straight arrow, but managed to reach his horse to escape. Look at that. I, I, I'm sorry, like, I'm sure a lot of people want me, don't want me to go, like, extremely full mad and just go all Genghis Khan, but. I, I, this, because this is my first time playing him, we've got to go insane. So, a cavalry division appears in Mongolia. I want to go to war with them as fast as possible. Let's see what happens. Zhibi, Zhibai contains many enclaves of people, both small rural villages and roving bands of tribesmen. Zhibi nationals have started inciting violence against their people and will not stand idly by or watch the Mongolian brethren be dominated by the Chinese again. A baron dies, but a Khan is reborn. Ugra is in chaos and the Baron is in a coma. But not a soul in Mongolia knows what will happen next as the various forces and factions within our continent now seek to tear apart everything Unga and Sternberg and the Bog Khan have worked to achieve. And are yet at the center of the city. The Mad Baron now lies unconscious, breathing in agony and muttering, broken gibberish as a heavy fever claims his body and delirium and delusion seizes his mind. As the world rages around him, Unga and Sternberg is locked away in the vault of his own mind, oblivious to the numerous aids and attendants that was now worked without end to try to revive their dying patriarch. Roman's mind was alight with fantastical visions and near prophetic glimpses of pure nirvana has very psyche and soul reaching out into the cosmic expanse and seemingly communing communing with the very essence of the universe itself though it is just as likely that these visions have less to do with divine intervention and more to do with the last of the baron's functioning brain matter slowly suffocating and decaying away as the voices ceased and the cacophony that stormed within his mind finally subdued in a sudden instant, the eyes of the Khan bolted open once more with life, now bloodshot and wild-eyed like never before. Without hesitation or warning, the Khan let a primordial scream that shook the heavens and nearly deafened those in the yurt with him who were tending to his wounds before finally uttering but one complete phrase. The world shall tremble in fear, for now I am become Mahakala, the destroyer of worlds. And also, we do need to do some more army reforms. The Russians, of course, aren't watching. <coughs> Excuse me. Only a few days have passed since the assassination of uh, uh, Kerensky, and Russia is still trying to regroup and reorganize. They would be too busy in their own affairs to notice much if we lay the groundwork for reclaiming our proper lands from our Chinese neighbors. Stick our claims on the rec recognized Mongolian lands. Where's Ordos? Oh. Not bad. The Chinese be darned. Unification for all Mongolians. Ooh. I like that. It's not worth the risk. Oh, it is worth the risk. Now, if we don't do well here, then, well, things happen. But whatever. Cool. We do get, uh, oh, do we go to war with both of them? That's not good, then. 1 to 5. 3 to 21. Uh, maybe we shouldn't go to war with them. Emperor of the Mongols. Huh. If this doesn't go well, the army prepares for war. With the claims declared against the Muslims in the south, the tensions between the Maklik and her state has risen to an untenable level, and is now ready to evolve into all-out war at a moment's notice. As such, it has become deemed necessary that the army be mobilized in preparation for possible war. We hope that these preparations will be enough when the time comes for Mongolia to show its might once again. Hopefully, we are as ready as can be. We're probably not, I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, we must be true. Isolationist policies or do not proclaim a new Mongol empire. Well, I want to attack Tibet. I don't want an alliance with them. There's not a faction. Oh, maybe that would be with us. Oh, we'll see what happens. The God of War. We have an Air Force stuff we can do down here. We have Ungun declares power. Reinforce the Mongol army. That actually might be really worth doing, because we definitely need more cavalry attack and stuff, so. Ooh, that's not bad either. Reinforce the Mongol army. We'll do that first. Through a series of reforced conscription measures within the new borders of Mongolia and then using our tribal con contacts to bring in more families, we'll expand the manpower available to us and reinforce our army. Our nation stands on the brink of war. Many of our soldiers fear for their lives in the coming maelstorm. In an attempt to ease the spirits of the men while earning the grace of our gods, our Khan has taken his army to the Amarbayas Galant Monastery, a massive Buddhist temple or complex north of Urga, to give tribute to the gods and to pray for the coming battle. Let us hope this raises the morale of the men on this eve of conflict. May fortune smile upon us. And I, I'll be honest here, I didn't do any of this stuff yet, so 
Uh, yeah, it's not great. Uh, get some of that. We'll see what happens. If we go do this very poorly, then my fault. I just want to be able to, you know, surround and conquer and just kill them all off. Are we using militia here? The Western Revolt has finally been crushed. After many months of fighting in the western part of the nation, between bandits, rebels, and the government troops, the revolt has been crushed. Most rebels have dispersed, gone into hiding or fleeing, fled the country. Fearing for their lives, order has come out on top, and the country is secure, however. There are still some small bandit groups taking advantage of the destruction. They will have to be dealt with, and at last, the nation is safe. Oh, that's not great. Ooh, that really sucks. How do we do this? We do want to do this stuff too, but uh, sending the army would be nice. We're on partial mobilization already. Realistically, that's not bad. That's not great, but not bad. Chief of the Staff of the Army. Uh, we would like more speed. Organization is pretty good as well. I like this one too. More artillery attack and defense. But who do we have over here? 10% more attack is not bad. Supply consumption could be really good. These are actually really all pretty decent. I like all these. Um, do we want more attack? I don't know. Do we want more attack? Hmm. Organization, supply consumption. Supply consumption is going to be so bad here anyways. And this goes for attack and defense. <sighs> ah, we're going to go with more attack. Screw it. We're going to attack as hard as we possibly can. Our only bet is to just encircle, encircle, encircle as we possibly can. Are these guys in a faction with each other? If not, that'd be really good. Actually... Maybe we do want to do the... Ooh, the Purge. In the past few months, it's become clear to the Baron that his rule is constantly in danger. Therefore, he's declared it's time to examine our current military staff and decide whether they're loyal to Ungun or whether it's time they saw a bullet. You know, let's go alliance with Tibet just in case first. Our people worked together long ago to terrorize these steps, and today we shall do so again. Mongolia and Tibet can stand united against the usurpers in China and Russia and subjugate those who would stand in our way. We're doing this because we do need to get that alliance first. Status of Mal Mandlai Batar Damden Surem. The MD has fought on the side of Mongolia for decades, taking part in the Mongolian uh, independence back in 1911. Though he opposed dialogue with the Mon rebels at the time, he was arrested by the Chinese and almost died in a cell. He would have died had it not been for Ungern's Asiatic Cavalry Division taking Uger from Chinese control and freeing him. Many Mongolians see the old man as a unifying figure, a sign that Mongolians are still able to lead in this Russian-dominated government. However, perhaps his links to the Mon never went away, though we have failed to find any evidence of this. Perhaps he can aid the Mon rebels against us, and has almost led to our downfall. He constantly makes it clear that he doesn't serve us, rather, serving Mongolia directly. Maybe it's time for the old general to meet his end. He is trustworthy? End him. Mm, sounds like there's a coup, but whatever. Okay, so maybe that was a bad idea for me to choose this path first. Because it looks like we're aware of these people too, which is not very good. Um, the goal is just to encircle. Just go in if we possibly can. And I'm going to have you... I need you to come down here. And encircle these guys too. There you go. Just go in as fast as you can. Oh, crap. The Kamul Kane too. Are you kidding me, man? Are we supposed to be able to win this easily? That's my question. Um, you go here. Kill these guys off first. Status of Nikolai Kazagrandi. Uh, uh, N.K. has been working under Ungern Sternberg after he left Siberia during the Russian Civil War. Ungern almost had him purged back then, but his high scale during the 1921 Man Revolution made Ungern let him stay. After that, he traveled to the west of the nation to put down rebellion and to train anti-Chinese forces in the province of Zungara. Zungaria. It is clear that in his mission he failed, at least at the start of the Western Revolt. He was in Zungaria, rather than doing his job of putting down anti-government activities. Ungern's mistrust of him was obviously justified. However, will his skill save him from being purged this time? I get rid of him. So I guess we weren't supposed to go to war with these guys yet, but whatever. Oh, hello. Maybe I should have allied Tibet first. My bad. Come up here. We should be able to beat those guys up. Status of Tog Tok Taj. TT's similar sh situation is similar to that of the Man Lai Batar Dam Den Surim. The old man formed an anti Chinese guerrilla group in Inner Mongolia in 1907, which for he became a Mongolian hero. He was promoted to the rank of general by the Bog Khan himself after he came to Ugra following the revolution against the Chinese. In expelling Chinese troops, he worked with the bandit leader Zha Lama multiple times. This is where the story, this is where the worry about Tog Tok Taj lies. It was Ja Lama's Yum Bais bandits who sparked the start of the Western Revolt just months ago. Perhaps TT organized the bandits into rebellion so that he could gain power for himself. I'll keep it for now. I really should not have gone to war with these guys so soon. They have way more divisions than us. Way, 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 way. Yeah, my bad. But Alliance with Tibet, maybe? Pact of the Brotherhood? Does not exist? To form a Eurasianist alliance. Is that the right thing to do? I want to turn on Tibet. I'll be honest. I want to turn on them. 
So we'll see what happens. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, the God of War will be nice. I did want to do this one too, so. Status of the officers. The officer class have proven their disloyalty over the past few months. With many officers deciding to align themselves with opposing rebel groups, it is clear that many of the loyalties do not stay with us. Perhaps it's time for the officer class to be cleansed. If anyone who dared declare themselves for an opposing faction, they are fine. It's fine. Uh, Tibet, can you join the war? We really need you right now. Come on. Good. Good. Because this ain't looking too good, man. Assassination attempt on Ungern Steinberg. <coughs> While riding his horse in the parade through Ugra, a sudden noise deaf in the crowds, a shot that echoed throughout the city that missed Baron Ungern by two inches. The assassin, a 23 year old man, was shot almost immediately. Ungern ordered the marching army to fire on the crowd, frenzied by the attempt on his life. The crowd dispersed as in a panic as civilians or possible man agents were killed by Ungern troops. After the city calmed down, the assassin had been identified as a member of the Mongol Adenam, however. Many peasants in Ugra claimed this to be fabricated by our government. At least the Baron survived. Status of Alan Ochir. He is a prince from Inner Mongolia, who has very recently traveled to Ugra from Inner Mongolia. After recommendation after Prince D, it should already be clear as why he's on the chopping block. Demchug Don Grob pushed to gain power and uh, during the chaos of the Western Revolt. It was this clique of princes and nobles who had almost let her downfall. Alano Chir, while still being quite a low level military leader, should be an obvious one to be purged. Goodbye. Scum. Tibet accepts their offer. Uh, we work together now to spread the word of Buddha. And you know what? We're going to call them in immediately because we definitely need them right now. It's power struggle in Ma Clique. For many years, the Ma Clique has been led by a uh, family elder, Ma Fujiang. And the clique is. He was seen as a pillar of stability who would stop any power struggle occurring between the, the very divided Ma families. Many in China even see him as a sta stabilizer of the Northwest, ending Tibetan and her own aggression to the Chinese soil. However, news has just reached us as Ma Fujiang has passed away. Currently, there has been, re been replaced by Ma Lin, but another Ma, Ma Bufang, and Ma Lin already embroiled in a power struggle. This could be a perfect opportunity to take advantage of Ma Clique's position. Good to know. Well, should have done that one a little earlier, but whatever. Kill him off. You seriously, just kill them off because we don't have time to. That's around. The purge has ended. With that, it's been declared that the purge has come to an end, of course. Many higher ups and the military figures were executed throughout the last few weeks, all in the name of safety and justice for traitors. Those remaining breathe a sigh of relief as the military staff of the nation grows ever smaller. We got some more political power, nice. Oh, uh, they're fighting it too, which is good to see. Alright. War propaganda, sending the army would be nice. We get more weekly stability. We still want to continue with army reform, but that's alright for now. Um, artillery speed, I like that, but mm, get some more of this stuff, probably. Yeah. Go ahead and start heading down there. I'm going to sacrifice a lot of this so we can just do some encirclements. Oh, hello. Yeah, don't get encircled, son. I'll stop attacking for now. Keep going. Uh, Boyan Delgar gathered forces on the Olan Ka border. Mongolian General B has generally stayed uninvolved with the power struggles happening currently in Ug Ugra. For years, he has continued to live in Inner Mongolia, raiding Chinese shipments throughout the region. Now, we have just received reports that Mr. B has gathered a large force on the border with Maklik, likely to do some border raids into Ulan Kab. Let the border raids begin! Well, we're currently at war right now, so I don't know about that, but we'll see what happens. How many men have we lost? 400. We killed off 18,000. That's actually pretty good. At least, from what I'm seeing, that seems pretty darn good. <clears throat> he makes his choice. With his large forces moving through Alan a thought occurred to uh, Boyan Delger. If he was to take Gui Sui, he would have to de facto control the province, with Ma struggling with internal conflict. It should not be too difficult to move his force through the region to take the city now. It is whether he decides to or not. It's too risky? Oh, uh, where's that? <clears throat> Try it. I mean, we technically already have it, so whatever. Good, we cut them off. Cut them off, cut them off, cut them off. That's all we want to do right now, just cut people off. Because there's going to be a lot of territory that they have to take. It's going to take so long for them to get through, which is nice to see, but still. You're not going to be able to win that one. That sucks. Actually, what are you guys? You guys are all 12 combo with, which is not great. And you're also 12. Okay, that's weird. Okay, whatever. Uh, don't get encircled. That's probably the biggest thing here. Just don't get encircled. Go and retreat for now. 
because we have multiple guys here, the matter of princes. The various princes, nobles, and aristocrats of Mongolian society have long influenced or controlled the political stage of the steppe. With the ascension of the black baron Roman von Ungern Sternberg to the position of regent of the Bog Khan, his de facto control over the nation's every aspect, a final stance must be taken to deal with these ever meddling and annoyingly ambitious men in Mongolia's high society. Before the Baron lied three options, each with their potential benefits. Using some of his precious plundered loot he and his hordes have collected and salvaged over his career. The Baron could sway the favor of the princes and have them eating out of his hands. Though by far the most costly of the three options, this would also buy their loyalty permanently, alleviating the Baron of an unnecessary headache that has plagued him and his entire rule without the need for excessive violence, and without causing further unrest from the already teetering nation. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the Baron could take the most enjoyable option for a man of his pleasantries and delights, and choose to have these troublesome nobles hunted down and arrested without any with any of the foolish enough to resist meeting the cool justice of a cavalryman's arrow. Though this option would further drive up the spirits from around plunder, the Baron's beloved cavalry hordes would also so likely to drive Mongolia further into chaos. Finally, the Baron could take the most simple and cheapest option available to himself, and simply ignore the princes and their unending chittering. They are just princes after all, and what are mere princes to a man of Unga and Sterbung standing? Besides, if left alive and alone, the Baron's regime would be better able to focus on far more pressing matters of the state, such as rioting groups of democratic protesters, or Buddhist extremists that gnaw away at our administration's foundation. Pay off every prince you can find. We lose authoritarian democracy, which isn't necessarily bad. Get more stability and political power. Simply ignore these morons. Because we have Ungern loyalists right now for paternal autocrats. Purge any f person foolish enough. Ooh. We actually get more paternal autocracy. I kind of just pay him off. Is there anything here that requires that? I don't know. I kind of doubt it. I think we want the purges here. Do we not? We want the purges. We like purges here. Hey, have we killed him off yet? No, we have not. That sucks. Go into there. Just go into there. Just hold on for now. Hold on for dear life. We only have 11 divisions. Jesus Christ. These guys should be doing better than this down here. Hey, we got rid of them. You guys should hold and start moving this way. And I want you guys to hold. You hold. You come over here too. Boom, we got it. Alright, so now they really want to encircle us, don't they? Construction one is nice. Let's grab, it's not even 37 yet, better artillery, because we can. We can only get how much political power every day? 0.9? That's not bad. Reinforce the Mongol army. Uh, follow with the Khan cavalry so he gets more attack. Our cavalry is already at force feared throughout the region of Lake Baikal, and a few improvements to training and organization will update them for a modern army. And it gets more war support too, which is always very nice to grab, right? Always nice to grab. Son, you son of a Rochester. What are you doing? Keep him in place. Coup d'etat on Siam, nice. You should be able to win there anyways to so do that. Um, you guys go into there. And we'll figure out where we're going to attack. I'll go in there as well. Uh, you might just be able to keep these guys in place and encircle them there, maybe? We'll see. No, 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 go here. You ding-dongs, go right there. Militia's well, looking pretty good, actually. It's not bad. Oh my gosh, it takes so long to move. Go in, go in, go in there. Uh, I want you to go right there, and then do that. Nice. White Sun over China, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Boom! You guys keep these guys in place. No, 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 no. Hold first, hold, and then do that. Ah, look at this! Tibet, yes! Yes, we'll gladly take some rifles, Tibet. Actually, if you wanted to, go right here first and circle two divisions and have a good old time with them. Oh, you didn't even kill them off first? Oh, come on, how did you not get in there first? You ding dongs. The goal is encirclements. Nothing more, nothing less. You stupid idiots. You guys keep these guys in place. Keep them in place. That's all we care about. Pin them in place. There you go. Now we've got three divisions encircled. A little better. Uh, you guys hold on here. Hopefully get a lot of army XP and experience from learning. Oh no you don't. Oh no you don't. International avant-garde. Very good. You're not done yet. Keep beating the crap out of them. Seriously, we need it. Nice. Good, good, good. Hey, destroyed. Are you kidding me? You son of a rock sucker. How can you not kill them off fast enough? Force the attack. At this point, I'm, we're just going to force the attack. I, I don't care. Force it, both of you. Kill them off. I'm not playing around with you guys. Seriously. You're literally causing us, like, so much here.
Thank God. Jesus Christ. Stupid horses. Stupid generals, man. I swear to God. This is why they're not leading the country. And we are. That sucks. Cancel along these. Yeah, we still need more rifles, which sucks, but whatever. Go in. Yeah, go in, go in, go in, go in. Take everything they have and leave and salt everything else if you can. Actually, go there. You might just be able to come back up here and do that. Yeah, you're not doing that, son. Julius of Fourth. All right. Good luck, Julius. I guess whoever you are, keep these guys in place. Keep them in place. You're not. Oh, hello! Another double sequence. For love of God, you better win here. I swear to God. You're gonna force the attack, you son of a gun. I don't care if you all die. What I care about is just destroying these enemy divisions. So you have, you better win or just just die. Get out of here. Uh, motorized cavalry corps. Recruit Ungern stop guard. Ooh, armored support. Uh, help from the guard. That's not bad. Armored professionals. Oh, that's not bad. I like that too. Ooh, get into the research slot. We could keep going down that way. That's not bad. But let's do God of War. We cannot have the luxury of letting our economy trundle along peacefully. We have a people at war, and our industrial sector must be made aware of this. All must serve the hold. Absolutely. Absolutely. Positively. Absolutely. Wrap these guys up. You guys hang out and hold for now. Nice. Mock is almost gone. We just needed the capital. Yes, we got another group gone. Great, great, great. And head on somewhere else if you can. Kamula Khanate. Nice. Yes. That's good. Please go here. Let's go here. It's fine. They're up to, into war. Yes, that's what we like to see. Are you actually trying to kill someone else off? There you go. Thank you. Good. Kill them all off. Ah, more political power. Uh, we're going to go to war economy anyway, so we better not do that one. Air Force. Let's grab this one. Hmm. We love the conflict. Of course, we don't want to win too quickly. Of course, we do want... Just go this way. Um, for us to do well. But we do need a lot of army XP here. Come on, guys. Move move those chubby little legs. Move them chubby, chubby, chubbies. Can the horses get down here faster? Or the, how do the militia get down here faster? I don't understand that. Another division goes bye-bye. Um, those Russians are not looking very good. Can you actually win here? It would be great if you could. We'll see what happens. Nope, they didn't want to get this guy out. What is going on over further west of us? Union of Copeland. Oh, these guys. Okay, cool, whatever. Yeah, every, every round in Asia I don't really care about, as you can tell. Don't really care. Oh, did you guys want to encircle yourselves? Oh, thank you. Where are you guys headed to? Over there, that's fine. You know what? I'll bait them into attacking us. Oh, Belgium wants independence. Well, good luck with that, Belgium. East Turkestan, yeah, go kill yourself, Xinjiang clique. Seriously, just go murder your own butthole. How dare you just refuse fealty to your proper overlords. Left KMT, alright. No, they're still... Oh, we're going to cut them off completely then. You know what, do it. Go this way. Completely cut off the capital from everybody else and they'll do a general attack. Uh, for now, yes, that's fine. Ah. Oh. Afghan Dorziev, patronized by Ungan, and a strange friend of the 13th Dalai Lama. Afghan Dorziev has arrived in Ugar to meet with Ungan. Agvan has presented Ungan with a Kala Chakra Tantra, reportedly written by the late 13th Dalai Lama, proclaiming the deceased Tsar Nicholas as the Arya Tara, the White Tara. This evidence appears Ungan as validation for his monarchistic beliefs, and the two have struck up a strong friendship. Although Agvan's influence has been reduced by this regency, his friendship will undoubtedly bring Ungan's regime closer to the Buddhist theologians. Or theologians. The Tsar's power is legendary. Nice. Ah, uh, absolute power. After the God of War, we'll probably go with... Uh, what do we want? What, 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 what? I want more military factories. We really need more factories. Er, found the Uga Arms factories. Our military infrastructure is befitting our geographic situation rather poor. If we want to equip our armies, we must produce more weapons, and that means, of course, new factories. This is beautiful. Now everyone go in. Oh, oh, look at that. We have an instrument here. Awesome. Oh, everyone's just killing each other now. I love it. We got him! <laughs> As Mustafa Kamal has been shot. Uh, Tibet? Do you have any claims on this territory? Um... I guess I will be nice. You can have Yushu. I'm taking everything else, because you didn't really move that far. I'll be honest, you really did not move that far at all. 
time to end all these sons of crappers. All right. Ungun's Pedge is, of course, gone now. Uh, pacify the Western Bandits. Retain control in the West. Oh, we'll come back up there and do that one. Sent an ultimatum. Can we kill them too? I hope we can kill them. The God of War. Disperse industry. Oh, Emperor Mongolia. Oh, the Mongols would be nice. Let's do this one first. Ah, yes. Uh, land doctrine. I kind of go superior firepower, but like infantry gets more organization. But it, will this help cavalry? I don't really think it will. Tanks. All infantry motors are mechanized. Mobile warfare. You know, we might just switch things around. Blitzkrieg, tanks. No, actually, no. Infantry, all infantry motors are mechanized. That includes cavalry. Is this stuff included too? Centralized fire control. I mean, it just makes more sense for us to go mobile warfare, I'm thinking. Uh, tanks and tank variants. So, not obviously cavalry, but... Uh, still wouldn't be bad. I mean... Mobile infantry is not bad. All infantry... They do get the cavalry bonus. A modern blitzkrieg. Yeah, just for role-playing purposes, we're gonna go mobile warfare. We might use a few tank divisions. Or change the motorized, but we'll see. I, I really don't know at the time of this recording, so... Uh, just in case. And mechanical computing. Some better reinforce rate immediately. And go in. Just go in. Kill them all off. Let God sort them out. We'll finish off the skirmishes when we're done here. Get as much army XP as possible. Because we're about to do some serious skirmishes after we're done here. I don't want to spend too much more army XP, but... And we have no... Oh, well, we do have a few things here. Division 2. Good enough for that. There you go. Gives you guys just a little bit more push. Just a little bit more. Nice. Yeah, we deserve it, you pieces of garbage. Huey, Huey, Huey Long. Wow, okay. That's cool. Good job, Huey. Skirmish him. Oh, Tibet's still fighting down there. Nice. Guys, hear what you do. Just go around him. Go, boys, go! Oh, we're pushing in. Uh-oh! Be a shame if you were to get completely surrounded and couldn't move. Oh, no! Those Russian divisions. Those Xinjiang divisions. Oh, whatever are they going to do? They're going to die. And now we're at war with East Turkestan as well, which is fine with us. I don't give a crap about them. Come on in, boys. We're going all the way in today. A good day to in Algiers is very nice. Kashgar will be ours. And take us victory, very nice. <coughs> Dihua. Found the Ugra arms plant. Emperor of the Mongols. Now that most of the Mongolian people are under one banner once again, the decision must needs to be made. Keep the status quo or declare a new Mongol Empire. Alright, everyone. So, let's continue on with our little game of just destroying our enemies. We've only lost 2,300 to quite a few. 31,000. I mean, I'll be honest. This is this is going pretty darn well for us. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this one. Like, so far, this campaign... It's only the first episode. I'm probably going to rage you this a little harder later on. Um, but, like... Uh... This has been, at least for me, a pretty fun episode. Does Tibet have any claims on this? You know... Eventually we will have to go to war with the bat. It will be nice. Tibet, you can have that. Wait, because in the end, it won't matter if they own it or not. Because they're not going to own anything in the end. Are they? Of course not. Oh, uh, you guys go through this way maybe if you can. Oh, yes, that division. Thank you. No, right there. Victory in Zhibai Liang Bang Yi Yuan. After a great fighting, we've at least last... Uh, subdue the Western warlords. There is much to be rewarded ourselves and soldiers here, including captured enemy supplies. How should the new populace, as well as these resources, be dealt with? Loot the land and salt the earth. They shall be incorporated peacefully. Wait, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 cores and lose some manpower and get some steel, or we get 3 cores. 
Bro, if we can core more stuff, we're going to core more stuff. I swear to God. Um, is that a core of ours now? Technically, yeah. So, yeah. Empire of the Mongols. Tibet, oh, they returned. Okay. Our allies in Tibet returned some of our proper lands to us. Okay. Oh, okay. That's a pretty good allies. Not bad. We're going to continue attacking. And you're going to go right there. And you kill all these divisions as well. Also, I don't want to forget this too. Um, we can do a oh, pacify the Western Bandits. Oh, we need three divisions in Western Mongolia, which is fine. We'll put them there once this war is done and over with. So, nope, you're not done yet. Nope, you sack of rocks. Excuse me. Happy 1937, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. We'll be doing quite all right here. Quite all right. Not great, but quite all right. <clears throat> Destroying these infantry divisions kind of sucks. Zoo D secures, secures power, and you're done. Alright, what's next? Chief of the Air Force, arms manufacturers, hardness, amphibious stuff, artillery. I do like that artillery quite a bit more, but everyone's using guns, so we're going to go with this one. Kashgar, thank you very much. More horses? Yes, please. Lots and lots of horses. Lots of speed, my my dudes. Uh, just take one of you guys go there. You can just encircle them like that, so. Kashgar is ours. Is it it? No. Aksai? Oh, yeah, it is us. Beautiful. Now, let's just say hypothetically that uh, we we're going to backstab the Tibetans. You know, just saying. Hypothetically. Very, very, very hypothetically speaking. Actually, I want you guys in Western Mongolia. Is this Western Mongolia? Yes, it is. Go up there first. You guys are really fast, so we should be able to get that one done pretty quickly. Just need to pacify them and keep them there for 180 days. That's not too bad. Demobilize their economy? You are insane if you think we're going to do that. Turn on Tibet. Pact of the Brotherhood. Well, we might have to go that way. Is that a... <coughs> excuse me. Swastika. <coughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Alliance of the Turkestan. Brother of Eurasia member. Versus... Conquer Turkestan. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, modern military doctrine. There's so many bo bonuses for land doctrines. Holy crap. I love it. So we'll need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You might as well keep going down this way. Baron of the Steps. Cool. I guess we'll do modern military doctrine, maybe? With the advent of modern weapons comes the need for modern tactics. We just can't ride over the deserts and mountains and hope for the best. We need an... Oh, my bad. Yeah, that's the one first. We need uh, an organized, sustained strategy to support our army. So what's going to happen now? We can't really move our guys out of here because we're doing the whole pacification thing. So... Oh, new Mongolian Empire? Let's hope so. Now that our cowardly enemies are defeated, but nobody can stop our Khan from restoring the past glories of Mongolia. With most of Central Asia in his hands, Ungan Khan rules all of Mongolic peoples and everyone living in a yurt swears allegiance to him alone. A man beyond the capabilities of our other mortals. Ungan is thought of by many Mongolians as an avatar of the god of war, or in the very least, as a reincarnation of the great Genghis Khan ends with his newest victories. These, those doubting these claims have been reduced to a mere handful. Fueled by the sweet fruits of victory, Ungan Khan has convened a grand assembly in Ugra to manifest the triumph of Mongolia's recent conquests. The question is, however, it remains whether or not the mad baron will satisfy himself with the establishment of a greater Mongolia or take his faithful tribal forces and his hot and savage division further on the path of ambition, madness, and glory. Mongolia will rise again under Ungan Khan. Bog Khan is the only true Khan Mongolia needs. Ooh. Mongolian Empire established. I'm sorry, man. We've got to go that way. For my first campaign, the new Mongol Empire rises. This is a really cool image of them. And a bold but not surprising move. Stamberg, under the guise of a reincarnated Genghis Khan, took to the theatrical stage atop his fortified residence. Amongst piles of ancient weaponry and armory stood, donned in gold plates and possessing a battle-hardened scar across the right side of his face, the once laughable eccentric now possessed an aura of intimidating energy. Addressing the gathering crowds, he declared the Mongol Empire shall rise once more, and with it rise will come a new age of war and conquest. Hail to the Horde. Finish off Gada? Yes. The infamous peasant band leader, Gada Marin, and his forces have seized a major bridge on the Trans-Mongolian Railway, persuading the local garrison to join him in the occupation as they attempt to bring the vital line to a complete halt. Being observed by Stanberg and his men from a ridge, Gada Marin has fortified his position, and he will only further entrench his position with time. Stanberg does not have enough men in his scouting party to overcome Marin's forces decisively, meaning a bloody and exceedingly risky conflict would ensue. However, Stanberg does also have his artillery battalion at his disposal, and with the guns in range, he has the ability to destroy Gada Marin's forces. However, such a barrage would greatly risk the bridge as a result, leaving the Mad Baron with a tough decision to make. Good men are worth a thousand bridges? Fire. We can't risk a line? Charge. Good men are worth a thousand bridges. 
bringing down the peasant warlord. The artillery barrage split up in the sky as his screaming shells tore through the air before colliding with the bridge, detonating in a violent explosion that utterly decimated the bridge's supports. As the structure began to collapse, Gada Madden and his men attempted to make a hasty withdrawal, however. Stanberg, fueled with vengeance and a desire to slay this bandit lord, ordered for his artillery attachment to loose Another volley, hoping to wipe Garda Marin and his army from the map. The second barrage hit heavier than the last. The guns now finding the perfect firing solution and arc after ranging with the first barrage, hitting with deadly accuracy. The second wave further decimated the bridge's foundations and support beams, but frustratingly missed the bulk of Garda Marin's forces. In rage, Ungun ordered salvo after salvo under the barrels of his howitzers glowed red hot, and his ammo was largely spent. As the smoke began to clear, the bridge lay in absolute ruins. Severing a vital connector of the Trans Siberian Railway, while God of Marin and the last of his surviving forces had long since fled into the countryside in the cacophony. Absolutely enraged, Ongan drew his service revolver and quickly executed the closest artillery officer near him before mounting his horse and riding off back towards Ugra. Or Uga. Urga. Once with both the bridge he needed to defend now destroyed and his nemesis once again slipping away. He won't be a threat anytime soon. Scourge of the Steps is very nice. Um, the uprising is gone, at least. Hey! Oh, we get 4% more population and temp. 10% more stability? Ooh! Oh, we're gonna be good here, man. We need a lot of army XP, because I wanna make these guys at least 40 combat with, which would be great, but still. We'll board if at most two divisions. Cool. And getting rid of this banditry would be very good as well. Where is the. Uh... So we get 0.5 more recruitable population and more stability and construction speed, which would be good to get, so. Honestly, this has been a really fun episode for me. I I've really enjoyed this episode so far, so. Ak Jong faithful come to Ungan. From the Orite Mountains near the land of Chinggis Khan's birth comes a revival of his old ways. A shaman, Chet Chaplin, has reported a wide seeing a wider in white, the white Buchan. Buchan. Chet has organized Bharat churches in order to revoke Buddhism in the land of our ancestors and is oppressing our history with his claim to the Orit will be liberated by some white savior. This is obviously referring to a great baron Ungan himself. And so Ungan's officers suggest inviting Chet to Ugra, Ug Urga to preach his message to hope. <coughs> message of hope. Though people telling, though people peopling within myself, thyself in gold and silver, a nation, white Altai, thou who illuminest the day, sun Bukhan, though thou who illuminest the night, moon Bukhan, promote him. On second thought, this will not do. Promote him. The Khan of Khans, the Mongol Empire will be restored, declares himself the reincarnation of the Genghis Khan. Ooh, we get, oh, Oh, that's really nice. Recruitable population factor goes up by 30% and more daily political power. We gotta do that one immediately next. Our glorious leader of all Mongols, Roman von Ungarn Sternberg, is descended from a common phoning mercenary. Foreign mercenary. To a divine crusader, leading all who follow to the glories of victory. He possesses the fighting spirit of those who conquered under the banner of Ik Mongol Uz, and is blessed by the Bogd Khan. However, even the Bogd has recognized the omnipotent force possessed by the Mad Baron. He is truly the Khan of Khans. And I do apologize, I don't know if I said this earlier, but I do apologize for just speaking super quickly. I'm just really excited for this campaign. So far, it's been a lot of fun. I love all the conquests. Um, stand up. Oh, stand up in America, good. Actually, since we're here anyways, Valkyrie Air Tank. Let's get some more industry stuff, because we could really use it. Uh, thank you. That gets more output. I, can we send America volunteers? Oh, look at this. Can we send volunteers? Oh, we can. The car must be at war. Oh, well, duh, they're not at war yet. Hmm. Got a little bit of mob activity, huh? They got some Jimmy Crow. What's in Command Center, which I still need to play as, which I've heard is just really difficult, but still makes sense. Demobilize. We'll see about that. It takes so long to control everything else here, man. It takes so long. But we're doing okay on artillery. Guns aren't looking too bad either. And our guys are really, really good on attack. So if we're ever defending, that's probably going to be a really bad idea to defend. Just saying. I like that we're on a war economy already. But let's get some more daily pickle power. The God of War. Oh, the current ruling party is national. Oh. The god of war. We did have national populace here. That's interesting. You do get another research slot if we can go down that way. Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Oh, wait. Do we become national populace or something? Ungern loyalists. Okay, that's interesting. So maybe we can't go that way then. Good, good luck, America. Um, this is The second division is what we want. You guys are okay. Let's convert them all to this one. Get rid of that. There you go. And any occupied territory, civilian oversight, that's fine. Convert it to resistance. Yeah, that's better. So wait, how do we do this? How do we get to there? Spirit of Genghis. So we have to be national populace for this. I guess we can't do this one? Okay, well, we'll see what happens, I guess. Oh wait, we can't do this up either. 
Oh, we have to do the wait for this one first. Okay. On the trail of ancient men and the death worm. The famed Tulku Jaghlahans Kultag Sonnanyam Dandin Bazaar. I apologize for my terrible mispronunciations. Part traveling storyteller, part poet, part serene Buddhist custodian for a high incarnation. Incarnation, art, political savant, and so much more has done much in his story career. However, today we take note of his natural and exploratory efforts, in which he worked in tandem with famed American archaeologist Roy Chapman Anders. Over the course of the mid twenties, finally, after much delay, Andrews has published his notes on Dam Din Bazar's adventures in his own trucks throughout Mongolia in his new book on the Trail of Ancient Man and Narrative of the Far Field War of the Central Asiatic Expeditions, released with critical acclaim and high sales throughout both Mongolia and within the lands of the Americans. The journal has everything from in-depth observational studies on local animal life of Mongolia stuff, to deep narrative recordings of local Tibetan monk oral histories, and with so much more lying within its pages. Though this too mentions many odd wonders and mystifying phenomena that Dam Din Bazar and Andrew saw in the travels, one specific passage has left the readers from Urga to Washington gasping in wonder. <coughs> This particular passage of note describes a beast that resides in the Gobi Desert, slinking past or beneath the great dune of that accursed hexscape, described by Andrews in the novel, supposedly quoting Dam Den Bazar directly uh, as being shaped like a sausage about two feet long, with no head nor leg, and is so poisonous that merely to touch it means instant death. It lives in the most desolate parts of the Gobi Desert. This account has left many readers reeling, with many more seeking to take a trip to the wild Gobi just to catch a glimpse of this living cryptid alive. Though many local nomadic tribes and old explorers no, may know better to believe these myths, with many believing these supposed death worm sightings as no more than delirious, water-deprived explorers running scared from Samboas. This is not to deter this myth from spreading like wildfire, from the sands of the Gobi to the hustle and bustle of New York City. All will now know the great and legendary beast that is a Mongolian death worm, and though that all who did not once pay attention to Mongolia certainly do now. All around, not a bad outcome for the release of a foreigner film, a foreigner's fib-filled account of a wondrous land. Who could tame such a beast? Who could tame it? Can we actually send you volunteers? You know what? I'd never send volunteers to these guys. We only send... Okay, one guy. That sucks. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Um, Cavalry experience. Yeah, you. you. Actually, it would make more sense if we... Uh, I feel like we're Democrat. No one's a paternal autocrat here, are they? Oh, you are, actually. Do we want to send volunteers to these guys? They're guaranteeing the independence of Mustafariat Mustafarafat of Jerusalem. I want to let the car win. Because we might turn into the uh, National Pops eventually, maybe. We'll see. So, <coughs> Do we get any more daily air XP? Probably not. Fighter manufacturer would not be bad. Eh, I'll grab that one. Why not? Con of cons. I don't want to do this. We lose only 5% stability. We'll be going to war soon enough anyways. Uh, not like it's helping us that much anyways. If we do select, we do get some political power back, though. I do go to partial mobilization. Jabal Shema, Southern Georgia. A bunch of Mongolian guys just arrived in Georgia to help out with the American Civil War. Who would have thought something like that would have happened? Get that political power, nice. Oh, you have to be over here. Cool. Keep training. This way we can get, hopefully get another political power or something. Or more army XP or something. Yeah, there you go. Um, well, they're doing ruin relatively okay ish. See what we can do. Olsendowski writes Beasts, Men, and Gods, a former captive officer. Uh, Olsendowski has written a book immortalizing Baron Ungan. The book is mostly mythological and contains a superstitious claim that Baron Ungan's brother, who allegedly died in the Russian Civil War, haunts his enemies and former friends, despite this candor. Baron Ungan is concerned for the mental well being of his Polish commander. The years of step life and his inability to return home is reflected in the book, which takes a fatalistic approach to the future of Mongolia. I should really see if he's still alive. If not, then it is what it is. But after that one, we are definitely going to be doing uh, extensive war games. Continue th theoretical study and the strategy of our ground troops. Can only go so far. It has been suggested we perform simulations and exercises to further develop uh, our doctrines. We should implement a large-scale study immediately. Can we actually win here? I would love us if we could actually win here. You know? We might just be able to. I wish we had planes. Ah, there goes Spain too, but I don't really care about Spain. Spain is just nothing but Spain without, without an S. Sternberg declares himself the reincarnation of Genghis Khan. 
Roman von Ungern-Sternberg has proven himself to be the savior of Mongolia, securing its defiant sovereignty amongst the surrounding conflicts in Russia and China. The Mad Baron has been personally blessed by the Bog Khan, proving his actions ascend beyond the majority of its mortals. Sternberg is sought by many Mongolians to be the avatar of the God of War, and by his most loyal supporters as a reincarnation of the great Genghis Khan. His victories over his opposition have only further solidified these beliefs now in a position of the supreme power. The Mad Baron has once again set shockwaves across the region, addressing the masses from the fortified capital of Urga. Sternberg has declared that he is indeed the reincarnation of Genghis Khan, proclaiming himself a spiritual continuation of the immortal emperor of all Mongols. The earth shall tremble under the trample of the Khan. Oh, he becomes leader of the National Populist Party. We lose a lot of stability, but we do get more cavalry attack. Yeah, change the popularity of National Populists. <coughs> that we call the Keshig Order. Nice. Oh, look at that flag. That's awesome. I love that. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. Oh, that's so nice. Promotion. Oh, well, hello there. You're also going to be very offensive. Cavalry expert. Um, not really sure. You know what? I'll, maybe I'll leave it to you guys. Should we stick with cavalry throughout this entire campaign, or should we convert our horses to motorize and mechanized in tanks? Let me know in the comments below. Should we go full LARP and only use horses, or should we not? I'll leave that decision up to you guys. Maintain control. The Mongol Empire rises from the graveyard. My name is surrounded with such hate and fear that no one can judge what is the truth and what is false. What is history and what is myth? Let's pray to the God of Wind. And let us do it well. You need to learn more, son. I know we're not doing great here, but it doesn't matter. You're here to learn. Good. Because we're just waiting before we go to war with someone else, so. Make sense of war games are great. And then it followed up with what? Okay, so now we can... Oh... Oh, we can do this other stuff. I want to get that research. We're going to get that research slot next. The God of War. The enemies of Mongolia lay slain across the battlefields. The enemies within Mongolia are held prisoner to the all-powerful Sternberg regime. For all those who dare question his rule of law, they shall meet a deadly end by the behest of his loyal divine warriors. His fury for the godless heretics across the lands have no limit. He is the avatar of Daichi Tengri, the God of War. We get some more 20,000 things of probably guns, and 5,000 more of the guns. God of War, more daily political power, plus 0.15, more stability, war support, and a research slot, and army XP. Oh, I can only get so... What? Ah, oh, never mind. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Um, uh, light tank manufacturer? Why not? Because we can. Because we're worth it. Go back in, boys. I know you're hurting for a little bit, but that's alright. You can hurt a little. Train if you need to. Train, train, train. Deal with Jalama. The blue deal. After recent complaints, the Khan is rolled out once again to attempt to pacify the warlord Ja Lama, who has grown unpopular with the people of Kold. Sternberg, along with his elite Russian god, entered the camp of Ja Lama while being tracked with the dead beady eyes of the Lama's battle hardened forces, and while well, uh, made the way towards the central yurt. <coughs> There, the Lama sat playing cards with his generals, old and wise, and yet completely drunk and surrounded by a horde of plunder and weapons. One such weapon in the Jalama's illustrious collection was a Russian Fedorov, a weapon that Arkhan had once also used in a shared struggle with Jalama. As the Khan began to speak, he was swiftly shushed and pushed back by Jalama's card, not wanting their game to be disturbed, or the master to be angered and roused from his drunken stupor. In direct response, uh, Keshik drew their weapons and awaited his orders. The Khan thought to himself for a moment. He had two options. He could either strike this arrogant fool down where he sat right now, ending his reign of terror and securing the city of Kovd for ourselves, however. No Nunkiri denied that despite his eccentricities and barbarism, Jalam was a great warrior and would serve the state well. After thinking for this brief moment, the Khan stepped forward and made his call. Stand down, we will be great to grateful to have such a wise and bold man amongst the ranks. Overlord of the Kavd. Warrior Society, that looks pretty good. Um, Scourge of the Steps. Western Banditry, which we're trying to get rid of. Overlord of the... Ah, it wouldn't be bad. We lose stability, but we can get rid of that anyway, so... In a flash, the Khan shot Jalama clear through the head as the men charged into the yurt. That's not bad. But if we get some more guys who could be really good for us? You know what? We sometimes are a peaceful group here. Sometimes. But God of War is what we gotta do. Oh, you actually were defeated, huh? Do I need to replace you, you son of a gun? You son of a rock sucker? Keep building. I know it's not great. The Mozambique Bush War, don't really care. Great detection. Let's grab some more construction speed because we could use it. As we continue to expand the number of soldiers that we do use here. Uh, so we can virtually all infantry. I hate militia, man. These guys aren't great either, but I still don't want to spend army XP. Because I do want to get this thing done. In two weeks, we'll have that one done. Continue army reform would be good to do. More organization and experienced soldiers' losses would be nice, so. 
Not sure if we can really use that, but whatever. We'll try it anyways. <coughs> American Volunteers. Extensive War Games. And they got... That's just, this is too good to not take. And we'll go to Conquer War. Uh, Spirit if we can as well. That'd be great. But this one, Spirit of Genghis, would be great. But we can't do that one yet. Um, yeah. I'm going to turn it to bat because we just, we just have to. We have to, you know? Alliance with the Turkmen's? Or conquer Turkestan. This might put us in a direct conflict with Russia later on. You know what? Instead of Tibet first, because we can always take them out later on. But we do, look at that. Mongolian ascendancy. Plus 50% daily compliance. If we've chosen to form the Brotherhood of Eurasia, this will broaden the options for our alliance. Otherwise, we'll grant a boost for our conquest. Uh, Quartermaster Vlad Rosh deserts the army. Oh, no. Quartermaster Vlad Vladimir Rosh, brother of famous painter and orientalist Nicholas Rosh, has suddenly deserted his post and taken a horde of valuables with him. Vladimir was always a rebellious, which was initially why Baron Ungan has allowed him into his Asiatic Cavalry Division. Now the Baron has put a warrant out for his arrest. It's suspected that Vladimir had received help in leaving from underground man members. It's unknown where he will head to. That is so sad. Why did you leave us? Traitors all. Even if we're defending, which we're, we're not great on, gets army XP. 144. Oh, that's nice. Now, this is, this is for China, but... Army reform. I mean, we don't have any army reforms. Claims of greatness. What if he gets more army reforms? I mean, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to that. Just get more army XP, man. Every day. Every day. You gotta be learning. You gotta be learning to get better. Look at the manpower. It's not bad. We're still mobilizing more. We're at 11.5% when you get to. South Rhodesia. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Never really learning too much here, but we'll see what happens. Ah, more divisions. Good. We're gonna make these guys at least 40 combat eventually, so... That is the plan. Keep training, keep training. You ain't done. You ain't nowhere close to being done yet. Oh, man, 56 day focuses kind of suck. Oh, okay. So they're going to go to war with these guys. Which means we will have to fight the Russian Republic eventually. Which is going to suck, suck, suck. Which means we're going to need a lot of manpower. Because, okay, so probably the plan is for us to fight these guys here. Fight the Russians when they're going to war with Germany. That's probably the best time we can go to war with them. Yeah, these guys are looking not very good. Still learning some. 6%. Not great, but we'll still take it. Yeah, these guys are hitting hard. Of course, they're a bunch of reds. What do you expect? Uh, any research? The research slots is not bad, but we're about to have fourth one, which is awesome. Oh, and we're done with that stuff, right? Yeah, we're done. Great. So now... Um, I guess we just focus on Tibet first. That's fine. The God of War, my friends. Alright. Fourth research slot is great. Grab some of that. Follow it up with Turn on Tibet. Tibet has long outlived its usefulness. Since now it's time to strike. We demand they take a knee and fork over the bounty of the nation. Followed up with what? Attack the Lash Autonomy. God, I wanted that one so badly. Rules Mongolia. Attack them. Um, Horsemen of the Apocalypse. More speed. Division recovery. Cavalry attack. Defense. That is just so good. That is just so good. As much I want to get another land auction bonus. It's just... I got... We got to do that one next. The world has gone all to heck. As predicted, we are living in the fourth stage of the cycle. The Kali Yuga is upon us. Oh, crap. That's not good. Uh, revolution spread. Moral decay as traditions are thrown away. Sternberg's powerful horde of armed cavalry are the modern horsemen of the apocalypse riding across the lands, bringing upon the end of this degenerate era so that a new one, of course, can begin. So, are we actually, can we actually do that? Do we get army reforms? God of War is really cool. We currently get how much? One, 1. 1.75 political power every single day. So, was that a waste of political power? Or army XP? Yes, it was. Okay, so that's a bug in the game. So, I don't know if the devs know about that, but that was a waste of army XP. To a degree. Oh, hello. Have I ever seen that one? How shocking. But, hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will probably go to war with the Islamic Federation of Turkestan, Tibet, and more. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.